What's going on, everyone? Welcome. You're in the right spot. If you are here to practice, we are going to be practicing some super cool chords uh, from Ahmad Jamal. These definitely help make up some of Ahmad's most iconic sounds, these structures. So we'll be practicing. So make sure to get to your instru instrument. Make sure you can hear me. you can hear your piano and let's get to it let's get to work yo i don't know i'm saying yo so much today let's do it we'll give it a few minutes as the room fills up i appreciate you being here with me today so later tonight at 8 p.m eastern right here on this youtube channel peter martin and i are going to be listening to one of the greatest jazz albums of all time uh that's ahmad jamal's live at the pershing but not for me and i wanted to cover a little bit of what we're going to hear later tonight on this guided practice session. It also happens to coincide with a brand new course I just released called Block Chords Made Easy. We will have a link right here uh, to save $30 for today only for YouTube watchers, for my GPS folks. If you want to get this new course, Block Chords Made Easy, for $30 off, it's, it's pretty affordable actually. It's a lot of stuff. And it's all about locked hands and drop two. And we're going to be doing some drop two practice today. We're also going to be doing some spread voicing practice. We're going to show how Ahmad mixes those two things up. So get to your instrument and make sure you can hear yourself. Make sure you can hear me. A lot of yo's in the comments. What's up, folks? But check it out. We're going to throw a link here to that. Uh, there it is They're right there. The launch special. Get $30 off my new course, Block Chords Made Easy. It's uh, a lot of what we're playing today and practicing today is explained in detail and practiced over and over again in that course. You know we love to practice around here. We believe in practicing around here. Yep, feeling good. I've already done one GPS today. I'm ready to go to the next level. So we'll give it another couple minutes. We usually start about five or six after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know where you're practicing today. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, vis-a-vis -vis my hat here. The Rona Redbirds. Tear. Stuttgart, what's up? Johnny B from LA. What's happening? So Greb asks, can guitar players practice this? Some of it, yes. Some of it is impossible on the guitar because the drop two voicings, yes, you totally can practice them on the guitar. Um, I'm not sure how to teach them on the guitar yet, but I know you can do it. And the spread voicings, you know, spread voicings, I'll go through it later, but they're so spread out. And there's, you know, there's seven notes in this chord that you just, you don't have enough strings or fingers to make it happen. Lee from Red Lodge, Narika from New York. Fisa from Belgium, what's up? David from Georgia. What's up, Judah? Piano Manian from Portland. Nice. Cecil from Holly Springs. Doing some chromatic scale work. Nice. Again, today we are going to be working on two types of chords you hear within the first four bars of Ahmad Jamal's Live at the Pershing, but not for me. I thought it would be fun to just take this little concept that Ahmad Jamal does throughout his entire um, performance of But Not For Me and kind of break down a little bit what's going on and we can kind of work on it on our own way. Well, we won't work on them, but not for me. We'll do it through autumn leaves because it's a little easier for some beginners to understand. I'm all about inclusion here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogero from Brazil, what's up? Alan from Louisiana. What's up, Rick? of Andrew from Halifax, Susan from Charlotte, Morgan from France. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. It's called you Cecil from Holly Springs because that's what it said. <laughs> but you're Phil from, from Cary. That's very funny. We'll give it about another minute. One more minute. I'd like to, like to just give the folks time to get in here and get ready to go. We're practicing some 
super cool chords, some easy structures. The drop two is not super easy, but we're gonna make it easy today, right? We do block chords made easy around here. Uh, by the way, for all of our YouTube folks here, check out the link here in the chat for $30 off my new course, Block Chords Made Easy. I think you'll dig it. We're dealing with drop two and locked hands in that course. We're practicing in that course. I kind of break it down, not just for the scale, scale, but how to play it over melodies to our favorite tunes. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check that out. You can say $30 today. All right, I'm about ready. I feel good. I feel really good today. We'll see how that translates to the piano. But we're going to practice, so let's get to it. Got my metronome ready. Yep. All right, let's do it, yo. Another yo, another yo, just for the for the start. All right. Welcome to today's guided practice session. My name is Adam Manis. Today we are practicing something that is super, super fun, super cool to play. This is taken directly from the beginning of Amajamal's amazing Live at the Pershing, but not for me. Uh, the track, but not for me starts with two different chord structures in which Ahmad is playing the melody with. And I wanted to kind of teach those two different chord structures and then apply them to a famous tune like Autumn Leaves, I think is a great one because beginners know it, of course, advanced players know it, but it's an easy tune to start. And it's actually, Autumn Leaves is fun too because it's a tune that you don't hear a lot of people playing drop to or even with spread voicings. And so that's what we'll cover today. So what I'm talking about here is when Ahmad Jamal comes in with the melody of or not, but not for me, right? He starts with that, right? It's, and right, he does that first phrase of the melody. Um, and that is drop two. And then he does, uh, you know, then they do that, that cool little, the bass line thing that, that happens. But when he comes back in with the melody, then he does some spread voicings those two voicings and throughout the head he kind of will split between some drop two or locked hands and some spread voicings and that's kind of what i want to work on today those two concepts what are they and how can we use them together because he does that so effectively right we just played the, the first phrase of the melody but not for me using both of those concepts and that's what I want to work on. I want to work on them individually at first and kind of break them down and explain what they are for you. And then we could practice them individually. And then let's start combining them because I think it's a really cool sound, right? They're both chords that we can make melodies out of, but they're completely different in their sound and their structure. Um, and they're both really, really fun to play. You could do either or both. And I love how Ahmad Jamal, not just in this tune, this is a, like a very signature Ahmad Jamal style thing to mix the drop two or locked hands in with the spread voicings as he's playing melodies. So without further ado, Here's our first section. We're just gonna focus on the first part of the A section. That's all we're gonna work on today because it's enough to kind of give you the meat of what this is about and kind of fill you in on how we're gonna structure this. So we'll start with drop two. Now, if you don't know what drop two is, drop two is a very simple concept. It's a four note voicing. Um, what we wanna do is start with a, a voicing structure called four way close. So if we took this first uh, the first chord from the first note here, right? We have the melody to autumn leaves in the key of B flat. So that first melody note, we're going to think about this as a G minor six, because that's where the tune ends. The tune ends on G minor. So we're going to consider it starting kind of where it ended from. So it, it does end on G minor, and that's where we'll start this from. So if we were to have a G minor six here with just four notes in our right hand right next to each other, from the top down, which is how I'm going to think about this because we want to think about these melodically, we have G, E natural, which is the sixth, D, which is the fifth, and B flat, which is the third. Drop two means that we just take that second note from the top of this four note voicing and we drop it down an octave. And so that is the first chord that we have here today is the drop two. I think I have the wrong one up here. Let's do this one. Ah, look at that. So that first chord there. Now we're going to use the sixth diminished scale, right? This is the, the, the scale made famous by Barry Harris on numerous uh, masterclass YouTube videos. And it's really, 
It's an octatonic scale. Here it's a G melodic minor scale with a half step between the fifth and sixth tones. So G, A, B flat, B flat, C, D, D sharp, E, F sharp, G, right? You probably have heard this sixth diminished scale before. So we have our first note here with the G on top, right? We just move each one of these notes up that sixth diminished scale. So when the A is on top, we have this F sharp diminished chord. And then we go, when the B flat is on top, the next note, it's another G minor six. So it goes G minor six, diminished, six. You could keep going, diminished, get it? Six, diminished. That's why the sixth diminished chord is called the sixth diminished chord because it's got six, G minor six, diminished, six, diminished, six, diminished. You can just keep going up and it just trades between minor six, diminished, minor six, diminished. It's pretty cool. So that's how we'll start here in drop two. We consider this first, this pickup bar, G minor six. And so we'll do, and now, right, we go straight to our C minor seven. And this is based off the Dorian. So again, if we were to do, um, you know, a C minor seven chord in inversion with E flat on top, G, B flat, C, E flat, we just take that second note from the top, we drop it down. Right, so we're staying here in drop two. Pretty cool. For our F7, again, if we were to, if we were to do this four-way close, like all together, right? You could do this with any chord. So I'm using some different sets that we go over in my new course, Block Chords Made Easy. You could check out the link here in the chat if you want to go check that out. You can save $30 today. Anyway, but we just, you can do this with any chord. It doesn't matter the structure. You can take four notes and just drop the second note from the top down. Now B flat major seven, right? Here's our four way close B flat major seven from the top down D, B flat, A, F. We just take that second note from the top again, drop it down an octave, right? Now our E flat, we'll do another six diminished thing. E flat major six diminished, E flat major six. And now we're on our A half diminished, right? Again, if this was a block chord, four way close, C, A, G, E flat, we just take that second note from the top, drop it down. How great is that? There's our D, right? So the whole thing, if I were to play it for you, one, two, one. Do it again. This is just drop two. Isn't that great? I love doing this over autumn leaves because so many people really have no idea how to do this on autumn leaves, which I'm like, it's autumn leaves. We can figure this out. It's not that big a deal. So this is what we'll practice first, just this section. I just wanna loop this for a while. Let's take it really slow. Again, the Imajimal thing is we'll mix in our big spread voicings with these. We'll eventually get to where we're alternating, but I just wanna break down here just to start um, the drop two first. So practice with me here. I'm gonna give you a bass line. I'm not gonna give you any other chords. Just gonna run a bass line. I want you to practice this passage. This is the melody to the A section of Autumn Leaves. Let's just loop these eight bars over and over and over again. I have this little here on the A half diminished seven to D seven. I have that G shifting. You may or may not do it. I sometimes do it, I sometimes don't. It's not crucial, but you can do it if you want. Uh, let's go pretty slowly here and let's just start getting this drop to feeling in our hands. Ready? I'll give you five beats to start. How about that? A one, two, three, four, one. F7, B flat major seven. A half diminished. Take it easy here. Go as slow as you like. Let's do it again from the top. Again, we just want to get this concept into our fingers. Let's do it again. Here we go, top.
one more time from the top. Here we go. Isn't that great? So this little drop two technique is so cool to be able to play melodies using these simple four note chords. Again, the concept behind it is we can just take our four way close, four way close meaning we just have a chord inversion, say our G minor sixth here, right? If we do this with one hand, not drop two, this is four way close. Right, we have G, E, D, and B flat. We just take that second note from the top and dropping it down. That's all we're doing with drop two. Now, the second part of what Amanjamal plays here in the melody of Benat for me are big spread voicings. Spread voicings are completely different. And I have the, f the very same passage we were just working on, right? The same first eight bars, but we'll do them here in spread voicings. Now, spread voicings are usually built with octaves in our right hand with a fifth or a fourth on top. And that can be, you know, you can do a, a flatted fifth or sharp four as well, or a, a perfect fifth or perfect fourth, somewhere in between, somewhere from the bottom to between the top, there's a fourth or fifth in between those notes. Then the left hand is just, I love a four note block chord here. I love just a four note chunk. I feel like the chunkier it is, the more clusters we have in the middle of it, the more it supports our octaves here. So we can do the same thing with melodies. This is what's so great about spread voicings. First of all, they're super, super fun to play. But we can really play melodies very easily. It's like playing with octaves, but we're playing, you know, we have more to it, right? We're always, check it out too, we're always mimicking not mimicking, we're, we're whatever, whenever we play with our right hand, even if we're changing notes, we're, we're staying, the same chord is staying in our left hand until the chord changes here. So on my, my pickup here, I have, right? And then on my F7, right? So I'm playing, whenever I play with my right hand, I also re-strike with my left. So that's how that sounds. Here's how it sounds in time. One, two, one, two, three, four, one. So again, I'm just looping that first eight bars of autumn leaves over and over now using spread voicings. Now you can hear the difference between these two, right? Between, first of all, there's an octave difference, right? That's an octave lower fully, but this is so much more spread out. Look at how far apart the top note and the bottom note are on these. It's, it's, a, it's a good chunk of distance here on the piano, which is why we call them spread voicings. And there's more notes. There's seven notes in these voicings instead of four. So it's a lot thicker sound. It's a lot punchier sound. Uh, with pianists like Oscar Peterson, you may hear them use this style of voicing when they really want to do like a shout chorus, right? It's just super effective. It can be really loud. If you're on an acoustic piano, you get all of those overtones swirling around. It becomes this like this amazing cacophony of sound. It's one of the best things the piano can do. Sorry, I'm super jazzed about the spread voicings today. I'm talking uh, in a high pitch and with a lot of volume. Hey, if you like what you see here today, by the way, give us a like and subscribe. If you dig our channel, if you dig these live GPSs, check it out. And I cover a lot of these voicings in my brand new course, Block Chords Made Easy. There's a link right here in the chat. You save $30 just today, just for our YouTube watchers. We've heard a lot of people say like, hey, I wanna go deeper into the stuff you're doing on the GPSs on YouTube, what do I do? Well, it's simple. You just get this uh, very affordable course on Block Chords right, right here. Uh, for a discounted price today. Anyway, we are gonna want to practice this before we start mixing together. So let's do that, shall we? Let's do it. Again, I'll play some bass. I'm not gonna fill in any chords, right? Because you have 
plenty of harmony to work with here. You have more than enough notes to play. Ready? I'll give you five beats. One, two, three, four. a big run here these are fun to just let go of one more time one more time be nice and sweet like a majumal Nice. So, okay, so we've done our drop two. We've done our big spread voicings, right? We've done the one. The drop two is actually fairly spread out for a four note voicing. I think it's, it's about as spread out as you can get without being really, really open. It's a great way to voice melodies. We've done our spread voicings, which is a bigger sound. Although I encourage you to go check out uh, and listen to Aman Jamal live at the Pershing, but not for me. Actually, I'm listening to it tonight with my buddy Pierre Martin right here on this channel at 8 p.m. Eastern. Come listen to it with us. We'll talk about all these things over there, too. We'll talk about a lot of things about the record. But when you listen to it, you hear him, you know, start, start out. It's a very chill start. He doesn't even finish the melody, but he kind of punches at the spread voicings. He's not using it how Oscar Peterson would use it as a big shout chorus, like the whole horns are in and everybody's playing. He's using it more effectively as just like a, as like a little punchy thing that he can add to the end of the melody. And as I said before, he is mixing the drop two with the spread voicing. So what would it sound like if we took what we have today here on Autumn Leaves and did that same concept? What if we started with drop two for our first phrase and then just like Ahmad, what if on the second phrase we went to the spread voicings and then back on the, uh, the, the old third phrase there, we're back to the drop two, right? Tighten it up. And then for the last phrase, spread voicings. Now we can really, now we're making some music. Now we're not just like, I am a formulaic voicing robot here to drop the two. No, screw that. Let's make some music with this. Let's do some variety. Let's really get into what makes all you know, this stuff really great. So I'll, I'll just give you an example here. I'll go through it a couple of times just changing between, as we have written here, the drop two and the spread voicings. One, two, one. I'll do it again from the top. So that's, that's how we can kind of mix it up. And you could tell like, there is no, there's no disconnect, right? There's, that doesn't make it worse just because we went from one structure to the other. 
It's like once we lock into a voicing structure, we don't have to actually lock into it, right? It's just whatever's coming out of our hearts that is the important part. So practicing going between some big structures like this is a great way to sort of hear yourself mixing it up and being human with this music that we love so much. So I love this idea. I love that, you know, I love discovering things like this. Like I was listening through this Ahmad Jamal the other day as we were about to prepare for our listening session tonight. And I heard him do this and I was like, man, I mean, of course I know it so well, but I never really thought about it or broke it down. It's my favorite part about listening to music and thinking about stuff uh, with you all in mind as we do these GPSs is learning this, this kind of a uh, really minute variety from the masters here, which is what we're doing. So why don't you try it? I'll play some bass. You play some Autumn Leaves Melody. We'll just loop this eight bars over and over again and just practice going here between the drop two that we worked on in the first half of the GPS and the spread voicings that we worked on the second half. And enjoy these two sounds. They're really some classic sounds for voicing melodies with chords that, that jazz pianists have been using for decades. Here we go. One, two, a one, two, three, four, uh. C minor seven. F7. We're just looping this over and over again. So I want to do one more play along with this. Um, and I want you to, if you know, if you're, if you're already playing along with this, there's a really, really strong chance that you already know the tune Autumn Leaves in the key of B flat. It's kind of why I picked this because I eventually wanted to end this session with this. Let's just keep going. So I will uh, play the entire form of Autumn Leaves, right? We'll just keep going. Here we have the first half of the first A section. Let's keep going into that B section and through the whole rest of the tune. Maybe let's do a few courses. Let's just play, play out on it, right? See if we can play the entire melody between drop two and spread voicing. See if you can switch it up. You don't have to like, again, be robotic and switch every phrase, but maybe try switching up when you feel confident you can do it, right? If, if maybe this is the only drop two phrase that you can do on these, Maybe there's some others in the bridge that you can do, maybe not. But let's just see what we can do here on the fly. By the way, this is a really important practice technique. Like, we don't need to work out everything methodically before we actually practice it. In fact, our brains really respond well to us trying to put together things on the fly. It's how we learn uh, very effectively some very, some very hard things to do. So sometimes you just have to go for it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to play the entire form to autumn leaves, the A section, the, the B section, all the way through. And then we'll do it a few times. I don't know how many times, maybe two times, maybe three times. I don't know. Let's see, see what strikes us. One more thing I want you to think about as you're doing this. You might notice when I was giving you examples of how to play this, I never went three, four, one. I never played it here as written with the quarter notes, right? I was always doing some anticipations and some syncopations, some triplets. Right, 
I was doing, what I was hearing at the time, the phrases that were appealing to my ear as I was just kind of running through this. And I encourage you to try doing that. See if you could actually swing this thing. Don't just play the lame square rhythms that I have written here. I just did this as a basic jumping off point, right? So that you have the voicings, but really try to interpret the melody in a way that you feel is swinging. That could mean anything to you, right? This is it's your time to make it your own. All right, so we'll do the whole form of autumn leaves. You know, autumn leaves, you ever heard of it? It's a jam session standard, we got it. From the top, I'll give you five beats and we'll be right on the top. One, two, three, four, one. again from the top. Try switching it up. We try reversing the drop two in the spread voicings. Let's do one more chorus. Maybe improvise with this one. Don't just stick with the melody. Here we go. One, two, three. Improvise using both drop two and spread voices. There it is, folks. A little drop to a little spread voicings a la the wonderful genius Ahmad Jamal. Um, check it out tonight. We're going to be listening to this, uh, me and Peter Martin, on our listening sesh. Hey, check it out. If you want to learn more about drop to and block chords, check out my new course, Block Chords Made Easy. There is a link here to $30 off today only for my YouTube GPSers. I get asked all the time, like, I want to go deeper on the stuff we're working on. We only got like 35 minutes. 
how can we go deeper? We decided to kind of just go ahead and give you these. So enjoy that. Check that out. There's a link here in the chat. There's a link here below. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. I'll be back here on Friday with some more drop two work. We'll, we're going to be working drop two over some more standards. So join me there if you're interested in kind of breaking it down even more. Until then, happy practicing. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, Bryant. Chris, I don't think the spread voicings are possible on guitar. The drop two voicings certainly are possible on guitar, but I don't think the spread voicings are possible. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Piano Manian. Let's see here. To do. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for the kind words. Very nice. I love doing this. I love practicing with y'all. Thanks, Colleen. I'll see you later. Thank you, Dorico. Super fun. Thank you, Tour Tog. See you at the listening sesh. Cool, y'all. Again, check it out. If, you're not, if you haven't checked out the new Black Horse course, I'm really proud of it. It's really, really cool. Check out the link below. Check us out in the listening sesh tonight. I'll be back here on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern for some more practicing with y'all. Have a great day. See ya.